And this is my cleaning card. Oh, we have to check our status. We have to get this card every time we come to clinic. So that they weigh us and they write the next uh, precision date, clinic checkup next time. So that's why we need this card. Yeah. It's very important because they want to know whether they have a problem in your system. So basically that's why they do it often every month. And the weight also, if it's lowering down, there's something wrong. They ask you, Samira, what is wrong with you? Last time you were 62. Today I'm seeing to be 60. Where is your 2 kg? I think that's what has made me see now. Because right now I'm not sick. When somebody was asking me, somebody don't look sick, who told you are sick? <laughs> I don't miss any as long as I've been on HIV for the last 16 years. I should measure the medication. Tell me, you don't look sick. But I said, I'm not sick. I'm the sick ones that were in the ward. I'm just a patient and a member of one path. That's all. So you think you That's have the results? Yeah, I have the results. Okay. No, results for last time. Now I've come okay. again. Okay. Not off. Okay. But they digress too much. You'll explain that to the doctor. We have more than 5,000 patients. In a day, we can see maybe 220 per day. It was 70,000 patients at 18 different clinics. There's no way that you could keep track of who's who and what's happened with which patient if we didn't have an electronic database. I observed over the years that there were a lot of projects doing specific applications built in Access or some other relatively simple environment, but then they found that it couldn't grow or it couldn't be extended or it didn't have the flexibility to really have a long-term future. And what we wanted to do was to create a platform in which people could innovate and create really effective tools, but were they able to actually share those different applications. By providing the interoperability between various systems, a country may pick and choose various components as they see fit or what, which would better suit their application. We call that the open architecture because what we are doing is we're trying to look for um, or define an architecture which is open and which allows those independent systems to interoperate and to create an integrated health system. It's not enough simply to be open source to say, well, this is open source, you can go out and download it. Successful open source projects uh, also involve community. And Paul and Burke and Chris and also Hamish Fraser have done an amazing job in building that trusted community that has attracted lots and lots of developers. All right, so this is the home screen of OpenMRS. So if we want to collect information on somebody's nose hair density, we would have to create a new concept. So now we're going to, going to collect information on that. So we need to add it to a form. So we see it, it does a quick search of our dictionary and past concepts we've put on forms. So Open Rosa is, is pretty exciting at the moment. Um, that's a community that was largely developed out of an IDRC funded project. Uh, we went into cell phones because uh, they're getting cheaper and cheaper and uh, besides the site does not even have to buy cell phones because the workers already have the cell phones. There's massive interest in that. It's a robust, thriving, open source community now. And the basic problem that there is so much incompatibility between phones. We're trying to kind of get up to scale, but it's going slowly. Here we have just a sample form that we've built. So you see it's a mobile phone interface, like a text message. And we've reached the end of our form, and it automatically prompts you to send the data off to whatever server we've set up to gather it. And it's sending. And that's that. This flies in the face of what people are typically doing right now, and I think there are motivations for that to continue because it's a very profitable endeavor. Diverting all funds, all resources that are key to patient care rather than to the tools that are required to uh, to, for information management is, is the way to go. So we're trying to just show by example and really not trying to focus on talking about it as much as just doing it. You see, initially when it started, they were planning for maybe 20,000 patients. But now it's more. I think we have reached over 100,000. Yeah, it has really changed. And we have so many people attending. Yeah, not only from our catchment area, but even from other districts. And you see, when we are doing the registrations, they are really interested. They want to know that their names appear in the computer. Here is basically where we do the registrations. Because this is our entry point, we register the patients from this side. There is another data entry room in the Ampat clinic. So when Chris comes, normally goes there. If we have any problem, this is the data room. AMRS is an implementation of the, of the Open MRS. AMRS basically stands for the Ampat Medical Record System. It was just a matter of trying to have a computerized medical record system in rural Africa. When you used to have paperwork, it could take you one week to compile a report and finish. But now, you can do it in a day, and you write all the reports that we send to the Ministry of Health. And the Ministry of Health 
supports it very much. It will use it for procurement of drugs and for retaining us as health workers. There's a lot of work to be done and we're seeing a growing community of people that want to be a part of that, um, that approach and so it's up to us to work really hard towards trying to create the substrate that people can succeed in that. And I, I really believe there's a tremendous amount of power the world will eventually see with this information system helping guide day-to-day -day care in very rural, remote parts of Sub-Saharan Africa. As all in all, I'm perfect. I think I'm perfect. Smart-looking lady, admirable, smiling, which I don't know how I smile. Hmm? <laughs> and that's, I think that's all.